Okay, now let's expand our concept of flux to include material moving through a unit area that might not really be fluid actively flowing as we had uh, just discussed. One possibility is that we have fluid in motion and we've got some material that's dissolved in that fluid and we're interested in the flux of that material uh, through the unit area. So in this sense we're going to have flux be equal to uh, two different types of processes. One is an invective flux where the, the quantity that we're interested in is moving with a flowing fluid and another is diffusive flux where the quantity is moving in the absence of fluid flow. So that will be our general consideration of flux where we have both advection, advection and diffusion. Now advection uh, will be considered uh, at least as an example we'll have advective transport of mass uh, of material that's uh, dissolved into a fluid or moving with the fluid. So in that case uh, advection would be equal to a volumetric flux times C. Well remember C is our cap theta divided by the unit volume of fluid. And we can write it this way. What we've written in the past is that it was cap theta length cube of the control volume or the total. But in this case if we just have a continuous moving fluid these two volumes are the same. Okay, so the effective movement of this stuff is the volumetric flux times C. And we can see the way that works if we write out the volumetric flux in terms of units. And if we write out C in terms of units, remember we've defined it to be cap theta and we'll use this definition here and these cancel and then we get units of theta per area per time which is a flux. This flux is occurring because of the movement of the fluid that we're describing here with a volumetric flux. Okay now we have a variation on this if we have the fluid moving through a porous material. In that case the effective flux is equal to Q times C divided by the porosity. And we can see how this works if we write out the units. So Q would be fluid squared per time. That's the way we'll always define it. And theta. And now though we've got to define theta in terms of a unit volume total. And so that's, that's the units of C, that's the units of Q, and then the units of N will be length cubed of the fluid, the volume of the fluid per volume total. So let's see how this works. There's that and length cube total. This would be length cube C. So there goes that one, that one, and we see there the those are the right units. So a um, advective flux of a dissolved compound through a porous media is given like that. This is for a uh, dissolved compound in an open fluid flowing uh, through a channel or a pipe, that sort of thing. The flux in many of the processes that we're interested in, the total flux, uh, will be equal to an evective component and a diffusive component. Now we saw in a previous video that the evective component in a general sense equals a volumetric flux times the um, 
dependent variable that's going to be uh, that I'm using where I'm using little c to mean a um, a mass or a, a quantity that's conserved per unit volume. Okay, so that's a general way to think about advective flux. Diffusive flux, this is where uh, the compound that we're interested in or the quantity that we're interested in that's being conserved is moving in the absence of fluid flow. And diffusive fluxes have a property where in, in many cases the, the diffusive flux is going to be proportional to the gradient of the um, dependent variable. So the the most common way or, or the um, probably the, uh, the the original way of uh, thinking about this and the, the original relationship between um, diffusion and a gradient comes from the uh, fixed law of uh, diffusion of mass and it's shown over here in the notes and let me write it out here in a little bit uh, bigger sense. So the the mass flux um, from diffusion is equal to in the, the x direction is equal to to this. So um, uh, this is concentration and this uh, capital D is the uh, diffusion constant and so this capital D is a bit different than this one. This one is a generic, this is a cursive, this is at least my attempt at drawing a cursive D um, and up here this means the general diffusive flux down here, this is just a capital D, and that's the uh, diffusivity. Now, diffusivity has uh, basic units of uh, length squared per time. And um, this relation here uh, shows us how the mass flux from diffusion is proportional to the concentration gradient. Here, just shown in one direction, uh, in a more general sense, we can write this uh, just using the gradient like that, and that would be a, a capital C. Okay, so it makes sense that uh, diffusion is, uh, well, here we showed that diffusion is described by Fick's law. This is, uh, this is well known, and we're going to, though, use this to, to kind of be a general prototype for um, other quantities, other types of fluxes that relate the, um, the flux of something to the gradient. And the, there are several examples of this, and one of them is shown over here in the PowerPoint notes, the, the um, flux of momentum. Uh, and in this case, the flux of momentum is uh, going to be equal to uh, a stress in a fluid. So in order to see how this works, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's go over here to the next page where we've got a little bit more space. And uh, if we recall, recall that momentum is uh, mass times velocity. And so if we're conserving momentum, little c is mass times velocity, yeah, let me rewrite that like this, uh, per volume. And that will be equal to the density of, say, of a fluid times the velocity. Um, now, we can write one of these diffusive-like laws where we say that the shear stress, and one way I'll write the shear stress is like that. Another way is using this uh, symbol tau, and that is going to be, uh, we can view that as a momentum flux, and it's going to be equal to the gradient in the momentum in the x direction. Okay, 
So this is similar to diffusion, where we have gradient and concentration proportional to the mass flux. This is gradient in momentum. Um, this term here is the momentum diffusivity. It has units of length squared per time, just like the other diffusivity. Um, and we also might recognize that as a quantity that's called the kinematic viscosity. Okay, so this is um, this is one possibility. We might also have situations where the density is um, is uniform, and if the density is uniform, then uh, it comes out of the derivative here, where we combine. Oops, where this term here is equal to that, and uh, this is called the dynamic viscosity viscosity mu, um, and it's just a kind of simplification. Instead of writing these two terms, we just uh, group them together uh, in in one term. Uh, we can check this out. Let's see the dynamic viscosity. It's got units of kinematic viscosity, which has units of length squared per time. So that's units of kinematic viscosity, the density, this has units of mass per length time. Okay, so here's another example that is functionally equivalent to uh, Fick's law for diffusion of mass, but here we've got diffusion of momentum. Heat conduction is another example of a process that is diffusive-like. Heat conduction is expressed using Fourier's law, which I've written here. It's kind of small, let's see if we can zoom in. So this is Fourier's law, and this is the flux of heat, and you can see that it's proportional to this gradient in this, this stuff right here. Um, so to see a little bit better what that uh, means, this is a, it's a diffusive law, so we're having the diffusion of heat energy. So energy is being conserved. And so that means that lowercase c is energy per unit volume. OK, so this quantity, uh, in order to express that in some variables that we, we typically deal with, we're going to write that like this. We're going to have. A material that has a density, Cp is the heat capacity, and I'm going to use this. That, that should be a lowercase theta, uh, which I'll use to mean that means temperature. That's heat capacity. And density we've already seen. OK, so this combination of terms, I say, is going to be equal to that. So to check this, let's just go and work out the units. So density is mass per volume. Heat capacity is the heat energy per mass per degree C. And this is temperature per degree C, say. OK, so this. These units cancel out. That goes with that, and the masses go. And we see that we have the, the right units. OK, so this is the quantity that we're going to use to describe uh, the process. Basically, this is our, our dependent variable. And so what Fourier's law is going to say is that the uh, thermal conduction, the, the flux of heat, is going to be equal to uh, this proportionality times the gradient in this stuff here. OK, so that's going to be directly analogous to those expressions that we saw earlier. Um, Fick's law, for example, for the diffusion of mass. And here we have the diffusion of heat. In a lot of cases, the density and the heat capacity are uniform. And so if that's the case, then we have 
the heat flux is minus K alpha Cp times the temperature gradient. Okay, um, and what we'll do then is group these terms into um, something we'll call the thermal the thermal conductivity. Okay, the thermal diffusivity uh, has, let's see, this term here, that's thermal diffusivity. That has units of length squared per time. So that follows the same unit convention as the other diffusivities. Um, and then we get another grouping here of terms with the thermal diffusivity to give us uh, what we'll call a, a conductivity term. And I'll call that capital K T. Some other examples of diffusion-like laws include Darcy's law, where we've got the flux through a porous media uh, being proportional to the gradient in hydraulic head. There it is for 1D, or in general, oops, that should be H. Um, and in this case, capital K is the hydraulic conductivity. And H is the hydraulic head. So what this shares with some of these other examples is that we have a flux. This is a volumetric flux here being proportional to a gradient. And another example that you probably have heard of is uh, is Ohm's law. Let's see, this is Darcy. Darcy's law. And uh, this one is Ohm's law. And it's going to just it's going to describe the flux of electrical charge and we write this like so. And that's voltage. So the uh, flux of charge is proportional to the voltage gradient and not surprisingly this thing here is called the electrical conductivity. Okay, so we've seen several examples and to summarize Let's just go and do it like this. Let's say we, we recognize that in general we have a flux that's going to be have a component of uh, advection and diffusion. Advective flux, in general, it's going to be a it's going to involve a moving fluid, and it's going to be the volumetric flux of that fluid times a lowercase c. Uh, diffusive flux, it's going to involve a static fluid and it will be of the form where we have a constant and I'm just going to call this c1, that's a constant, uh, times the gradient in our lowercase c. Okay, so when we actually come up with examples for particular processes uh, we'll fill in the blanks. These C's are just placeholders. Um, but I think it's convenient at this point to kind of see an overview, see this big picture that we'll come back to many times